Hello everyone, my name is Mike and here at Tech Car Moon, we uncover tech at home and in video. So hit that subscribe button if you want to see more, but today I'm gonna to be talking about if the MacBook Pro 2015 can still be a workhorse five years on. So let's uncover it right now. With all the talk about the new MacBooks that have been launched, like the new MacBook Air 2020, or the rumored 14 inch MacBook Pro, which will be announced in the coming months, I thought it would be interesting to take a little bit of a look at the 2015 MacBook Pro. Now this model was released in early of 2015 and this MacBook Pro is the model that people will argue is the best MacBook Pro that Apple has ever made because of its awesome port selection and its great keyboard. For those interested, I will actually be doing a comparison between this laptop and the new MacBook Air 2020. So stay subscribed if you want to see if the MacBook Pro 2015 is better than the all new MacBook Air 2020. This will be an interesting video for sure. So let's run down the specs typical for this model. Firstly, you get a 2.7 gigahertz i5 fifth gen processor with eight gigabytes of RAM and 128 gigabytes of storage. You can upgrade the processor to an i7, the RAM up to 16 gigabytes and the SSD up to one terabyte. Just to let you know, the only part that you can upgrade relatively easy by yourself is the SSD storage. So be sure to pick up the right processor and RAM configuration because you will be stuck with this. You won't be able to upgrade those later down the line. The design is very iconic with the glow up Apple logo on the back and its full aluminium body. Yes, I said aluminium, not aluminum. I'm British, all right? <laughs> <laughs> and the MagSafe 2 charger is awesome as well, which is just the best charger on the market for any device, or at least it was until Apple got rid of it. Yes, it's been four years, and yes, I'm still a little bit bitter that Apple have got rid of this charger, as well as the glow up Apple logo. I still think that this looks cool. This laptop is definitely not thin and light by today's standard at 1.58 kilograms or 3.48 pounds, and with a thickness of 0.71 one inches or 18 millimeters. It fits comfortably in my backpack and honestly, it's not that bad, but I'm not the fussiest consumer when it comes to stuff like that. The MacBook chassis has held up well over the years and the trackpad still feels great. Now it may be a little bit small nowadays compared to the all new MacBooks that have been launched, but it's still a great size. And if you are coming from a Windows laptop, those trackpads aren't great. And the trackpad on this is plenty big enough and the gesture controls are just awesome. So let's talk about each of the components and how it holds up today. Firstly, the keyboard feels and sounds great. It has one and a half millimeters of travel with 80 grams of pressure, making it really easy to type on. Now, I'm not a typist, nor do I sort of type articles or essays every day, but I love this laptop. Here is a quick type test so that you can make up your own opinion. Next up is the screen. Firstly, this is a 2560 by 1600 display with a brightness of just under 400 nits. It also displays between 91 and 97% of the sRGB color gamut and 60% of Adobe's RGB color gamut, which isn't the most color accurate display for today's standards. But unfortunately, I don't have the equipment to test the color accuracy of this display and also to double check some of the numbers because they were sort of all over the place when I was checking online. The bezels are large by today's standards, but for 2015, it wasn't really an issue. I love this display, but I would recommend using a color accurate display if you want to do any color accurate work. This is a gorgeous display. And in my opinion, I still think it holds up well today. The ports are literally the thing I love about this laptop. It has two Thunderbolt 2 ports, two USB 3.0 ports, the charging connector, which is awesome, the HDMI uh, connector, 
and an SD card slot. It is a bit annoying that I have to buy this £30 dongle for Ethernet, but I shouldn't really complain with the state of the new MacBooks at the moment. The battery life on this model is still great and it's still giving me around 10 hours of battery life with web usage, but heavier tasks, please don't be surprised if you see this number halved. So let's get into some real world tests. The model that I have here is the 3.1 gigahertz dual core Intel i7 fifth gen processor, 16 gigabytes of DDR3 memory and Intel Iris 6100 integrated graphics. All my tests will be done using this configuration and seeing as I'm a video editor, that is the first thing I'm going to be uncovering. This project is a nine minute 4K edit with two levels of grading and a handful of transitions with an audio correction. This will give an average use case for moderate video editing. So let's see how the playback is on Final Cut Pro. Different types of motion blur effects. So we've got extreme, minimal, uh, moderate blur. And I really like moderate blur as this, this is, you know, this is what I, I prefer using on my clips when I need to use it. So it And then can you see, we've got loads of different types of motion blur effects. So we've got extreme, minimal, uh, moderate blur. And I really like moderate blur as this, this is, you know, this is what I, I prefer. Next, I exported this project three different times and averaged out the results. So for this project, it took about 21 minutes and 17 seconds, which really isn't that bad, but definitely slower compared to the newer MacBooks that are out at the moment. Next up, let's test the webcam quality and built-in microphone quality. So as you can tell, the audio and video quality isn't great on this. It is okay for FaceTime and Skype and everything like that at a pinch, but I wouldn't really recommend it for anything more. I still can't believe that this is the same webcam pretty much as what's in the new MacBooks. I mean, even the Mac book had a worse camera. Apple, please update this for the future. The speakers on this are good, but not great. It's not super loud and the quality is okay, but it was great at the time. And Apple, to be fair, has made huge strides in this department over the years. Here is a quick sample using my DT D3 Pro microphone in my Panasonic G85. Now let's uncover a little bit deeper and see how this laptop performs under stress. I did a magic speed test to see how fast the SSD on this was and I was getting about a thousand megabits per second for read and write, which is pretty impressive and it should be fast enough for pretty much any task that you throw at it. I also ran Blackmagic Raw speed test for 20 minutes and with a compression of eight to one on 4K, it got 38 frames on the CPU and 44 frames using metal with the CPU. If you are filming using a Blackmagic 4K camera and trying to pair it up with the right MacBook, then this laptop might be the right one for you. Then I ran Cinebench R24 times and got a CPU score of 833 points. Next up, I tested the MacBook Pro using Nova Bench, which I got a score of 1034. And then lastly, I used Unigine Valley to test the GPU and I got a score of eight, uh, 288, which isn't really that great. I thought I would also do a fan speed noise test as well while it was under load. And I have to say that this laptop gets very loud under load for sure. Here is a quick preview of that. So enough about benchmarks. What has this laptop been like to use as my daily driver for a little while? Firstly, this laptop may not be the fastest laptop out there, but the fact that it can edit my 4K YouTube videos, along with doing quite a few multicam edits as well, is good. It does take a little bit of time to render with certain videos, 
but overall, it's not really annoyed me that much. Everyday tasks were a breeze. So if you were thinking of picking this up for let's say university, then I wouldn't really hesitate. The SSD speeds are awesome and the processor can handle pretty much anything you can throw at it, even though it's a dual core fifth gen Intel processor. Talking about this processor, this particular one has a base clock of 2.7 gigahertz, but when I ran it through a Cinebench R20, it stayed pretty consistent at 3.2 to 3.4 gigahertz. But what was also consistent was the CPU temperature, which stayed pretty consistent at 100 degrees, which is pretty crazy. This was something that definitely worries me for the long term, but this computer is five years old and it still seems to be working great. So maybe I shouldn't worry and it's fine. <laughs> so would I recommend picking one up? Well, yeah, definitely. The computer has fast AC Wi-Fi. It has really good performance to get all my work done. Well, at least this i7 processor model anyway. And the port selection means I basically have everything I need as a content creator without having to go out and purchase uh, sort of additional dongles or accessories. Be aware that this does get a little bit noisy under load and it does run hot under load as well, but it doesn't seem to affect performance from my tests, especially compared to other laptops out on the market. There we have it. As always, this is a discussion. So please leave a comment on whether you agree or disagree with any of my points. And also give me your questions and hopefully I can answer them about this laptop. Also check out the links in the description below if you want to support the channel. If you haven't already, please follow me on Twitter and Instagram at techcarmoon. Also drop me a like if you've enjoyed this video and hit that subscribe button if you want to see more content. Also click these links just over here if you want to watch more of my content. But anyway, everyone, look after yourselves and I'll see you in the next one. Take care, bye.